Anthony Richardson's film is a terrifying yet beautiful ride on a roller coaster of emotions. With highs that'll make you a believer and lows that'll crush your spirit, Richardson is the epitome of a boom or bust prospect. There's a reason why most Florida fans who watched him play last season are shocked that he's getting so much attention as a top prospect in the draft, but there's also a reason why many draft analysts have him in their top 10. He wasn't a particularly productive or efficient quarterback in college, but he's also the most athletically gifted player we've seen at his position since Cam Newton. At 6'4", 244, Richardson combines a giant frame with blazing speed, slippery feet, and godlike arm strength. His film is loaded with jaw-dropping plays like the one you see here. It's fourth down and eight in the third quarter of a close game, and Vanderbilt is disguising their coverage pre-snap. The single high safety shell hints at a middle of field closed coverage like cover three, but Vanderbilt called a two deep quarter quarter half coverage with a five man blitz. The deep safety and strong side corner are dropping into deep quarters on the bottom of your screen and up top, the wide corner is squatting on the flat and the deep safety is rotating into a deep half. Post snap, Richardson sees the weak side safety turn his back to the ball, which tells him that the hole between the corner and the safety will open up on the sideline. Once his receiver is even with the corner, Richardson fires an accurate ball into a tight window for a massive fourth down conversion in a tight game. Richardson's arm strength allows for tight window throws like these. He flashes brilliance on throws that require him to push the ball downfield, even when he's under pressure. Here, Florida State is in what looks like some sort of match cover three with a bracket on the weak side X receiver, but missed assignments make it tough to identify this coverage with any degree of certainty. Florida called a two-man deep shot concept off a of play action that tells the number one receiver at the top of your screen to run a deep over or dover route, and the opposite side number one to run a corner go. Post snap, the center field safety bites on the run fake, which allows for a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside to Richardson's right, but a linebacker got into the backfield unblocked on a delayed blitz. Despite the free runner though, Richardson dropped a perfect 50-yard bomb and he made it look effortless. His athleticism also makes him dangerous outside of the pocket. He frequently evades pass rushers in the backfield and can make big time throws on the move. On this third and 14 from back in week four against Tennessee, Florida called a sticks concept, which tells each receiver to break back to the ball at the first down marker. Tennessee's defensive line stunt creates a lane for Richardson to leave the pocket, he keeps his eyes downfield while he rolls out, and delivers an accurate ball to convert on third and long. With 4-4 speed and top tier explosiveness, Richardson is a threat in the open field as well. Here, against South Carolina, Florida is facing a 3rd and 18 at the end of the first half. Richardson again finds a lane when he reaches the top of his drop, he breaks 3 tackles at the line to gain, and creates another conversion on 3rd and long. Richardson can not only take a big hit, but also deliver one with the ball in his hands. He can run around you, by you, or lower his shoulder and run right through you. His overall athleticism is obvious, but there's also a lot to be desired about the mental side of Richardson's game. The most underrated quality he displays as a passer is eye work, a category that raw and inexperienced quarterbacks like Richardson usually fall short in. On this play from week 9, Florida dialed up a swirls concept versus Georgia's cover 3 call, which calls for swirl routes from the number 1 receivers, and a hook route in between the hashes from the slot. Post snap, Richardson wants to find that slot receiver over the middle, but he sees one of the hook zone linebackers sitting in the window, so he shoots his eyes to the flat to open up space, then delivers a great ball that results in a gain of 12 yards. Then here, against Florida State, Richardson sees the free safety rotate to cover the post, and shoots his eyes to the number one receiver on the bottom of your screen. The safety takes his eyes off the ball to get as much depth as he can, and Richardson fires a great ball into the opposite side slot receiver for a 42-yard touchdown. Plays like these illustrate how great Richardson can be when he puts it all together, but these plays are juxtaposed by the really ugly results of his shortcomings. For one, Richardson is painfully inaccurate. Among the 42 Power 5 quarterbacks who dropped back to pass at least 300 times last season, Richardson ranked dead last in both completion percentage and on-target pass percentage. He did post an average target depth of 10.7 yards, which ranked third highest in this group, but that doesn't offset his downright atrocious accuracy numbers. In terms of playing quarterback in the NFL, nothing is more important than accuracy. And to make matters worse for Richardson, it's also one of the most difficult areas to improve in. But to determine whether or not a quarterback's lack of accuracy can be fixed, it's important to first identify the root of the problem. And for Richardson, it's footwork. I've learned a ton about quarterback play from JT O'Sullivan's QB School, which is a phenomenal resource that I will link at the top of the description. And JT often talks about wasted movement in quarterback's footwork. 
When you watch Richardson's tape, and specifically his inaccurate throws, you can see that wasted movement is a huge issue for him. Here, against South Carolina, Florida called a deep shot concept versus single high safety shell, with a deep post from the number one at the bottom of your screen, and a dover from the number one at the top. Here, the post safety stays home with the deep post route, which allows the opposite side number one to get open on his dover route. But I want you to pay close attention to Richardson's footwork as he prepares to throw. He does a nice job of stepping up to avoid the edge when he reaches the top of his drop, but the wasted movement begins right after that. By this point, Richardson's feet are too close together to step into this throw, so he takes another step to reset his feet, but his base is still too narrow. He finally widens his base enough to make the throw, but by that point, he has a pass rusher in his face. The pressure, combined with Richardson's rushed and uncomfortable process, results in a terribly inaccurate pass that should have been picked off. He was also late to throw this ball because he felt like he needed to throw with zip. The window for a low trajectory pass didn't open until late, but if Richardson had thrown this with a bit of touch, he could have let go of it earlier. His ability to throw with touch did improve as the season went on, but he has a lot of room for improvement in making higher trajectory throws. In true gunslinger fashion, Richardson also tends to get tunnel vision on a predetermined target. Florida called the same design you saw on the last play, again later in that Week 11 game against South Carolina, this time against a five-man blitz with quarters coverage behind it. Post-snap, Richardson never takes his eyes off of the receiver running the deep post, and despite triple coverage, he goes for it. Instead of putting the ball in harm's way, he could have hit either the over route or the underneath drag for big gains. Richardson threw the ball away 25 times last year, which was the seventh highest total among Power 5 quarterbacks. So his accuracy numbers were hurt by a lot of throwaways, but those throwaways were often a result of Richardson's slow progression speed and indecisiveness. Here against Texas A&M, Florida's running another deep shot play action concept against a single high safety shell, again with a deep post from the number one receiver on one side of the formation, and a Dover route coming from the other side. Texas A&M's wide cornerbacks lined up with outside leverage, which gave Florida receiver Jaquavion Frazier's the leverage advantage on his Dover route. The run action sucked the linebackers up toward the line of scrimmage, which opened up a massive window over the middle as Richardson reached the top of his dropback. Right here, Richardson should have thrown this ball. Instead, he waited, which let the post safety cover up the over route. He got jittery in the pocket with a narrow base, and rather than just progressing to the checkdown, he threw it away before the pressure got in. Florida's offensive staff tried to maximize Richardson's skill set by using play action on 37% of his dropbacks last season and calling long developing concepts that allowed him to push the ball downfield. The structure of this offense resulted in Richardson's average time to throw of 3.2 seconds, which was the second longest among Power 5 quarterbacks who dropped back to pass at least 300 times last year. Outside of screen passes, the quick game in Florida's offense was virtually non-existent. Richardson let go of the ball in less than two and a half seconds only 30% of the time last year, which was the lowest rate among qualifying quarterbacks in the Power 5 conferences. For Richardson to be a legitimate franchise quarterback at the next level, the mental side of his game needs to move faster. He's going to need to learn how to execute quick game concepts and grow more confident in his post-snap reads. Now, the good news is, he's just 21 years old. He only has one season starting under his belt, so he lacks experience, but also has tons of room to grow. Richardson is a shot in the dark if there ever was one, but the problems are mostly fixable and the potential is truly limitless. His athletic ability raises his floor as a prospect because he could produce in a quarterback run heavy offense from day one, similar to what we saw from Justin Fields last year. As for where he ranks among the other quarterbacks in this class, I'm calling him and CJ Stroud 1A and 1B because their value as prospects varies based on the situation they're met with in the NFL. If you're Seattle or Detroit, I think it absolutely makes sense to give Richardson a shot because those teams can let him sit for a year and provide him with the supporting cast he needs when he's ready to start. But if you're a team that wants a franchise savior from day one, you're better off with Stroud or Bryce Young. One way or another, Richardson is one of the most unique prospects we've ever seen at the quarterback position. If he's subjected to poor weapons, poor protection, and stubborn coaching, he could easily crash and burn. Patience will be key in the development process. If the team who drafts him provides him with what he needs to develop, Richardson has a chance to be one of the greatest talents we've ever seen play quarterback. But that's all I've got for today. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to keep pumping these scouting reports out until draft day, so if there's anyone you're anxious to see, drop a comment down below. I will be back soon with another one of these. Not sure who it'll be on yet, but you'll know soon enough. So until then. Peace.